Oh, I didn't see you there. What's good, people? Welcome back to another video. My name is Anas. I'm a junior doctor in London. I literally just graduated a couple of weeks ago. I was a medical student. And before we start, you know, I should probably just check up on you. How y'all doing? Hope y'all are doing good during these quarantine times. You're staying safe at home. I don't know why I'm doing American accent, but uh, <laughs> I'm so bad at accents. Let's move on. You know, uh, today we have a highly, highly requested video. This is literally a topic I get asked about all the time. I get asked about it in the Instagram DMs, in the comments. I mean, it's just all the time, yeah? So, and up until now, I've been quite reluctant to give like a very definitive answer. Uh, and it's, let's just say what it is, you know, it's to do with uh, whether a student should be getting an iPad Pro or a MacBook. So which one's better, which one should a student go for? And um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a particularly difficult question to answer because for me, I've never really used the iPad as its own kind of sole device. It's always been kind of, uh, as an accessory to my MacBook, right? So it's almost been like an extension of my laptop and I've never really used it on its own. So in an ideal scenario, I would have advised people to have kind of both really. But in the recent year, we've had a lot, a lot of changes in particular to do with iPad OS being released. Uh, so that as an update, but then also having the release of the Magic Keyboard. And this has made the iPad to be a lot more versatile and it's also become a lot more laptop-esque kind of thing and that's why i think the video is quite timely right now and you can make a fair comparison but before we delve into the nitty-gritty of things i'd just like to say that this video is sponsored by paperlike which is my personal favorite screen protector and i used to use paperlike way before they started sponsoring my videos literally just kind of stick it on the ipad and it acts to protect the screen and also makes it feel like paper when you're writing makes it sound like paper too which is really really nice so if you want to get a paperlike for any of the ipads that you have then there is a link in the description below and I do get somewhat of a commission uh, but if you don't want to use the link then don't use the link get your paper life from somewhere else but uh, but yeah there is a link in the description there if you want to use it now I'm just gonna say off the bat give you the conclusion that for most students the iPad Pro these days is gonna be the better most versatile option that's except for computer science students and probably filmmaking students, I would say, uh, those two mainly, and we're gonna go into the reasons why. Now, I'm not saying that every student should be getting this newest iPad Pro, which is the 2020 version, because some people just don't have the cash. It's just not affordable for everyone. So you can be a bit street smart. So either get the iPad Air with its keyboard and then you'll have the mouse functionality with the new iPad OS. Or alternatively, you can get the iPad Pro 2018, I think, which is essentially identical to the one we have today, but get it off like eBay or get a refurbished one or get it off Amazon, I think it's cheaper on there too. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're a bit street smart, you can probably get it a bit cheaper. And the way we're gonna compare these two devices is to use a very rational methodology. I don't know if that makes sense grammatically. Uh, we're gonna use a very rational method, a rational method, which is making a list. So on this side, we're gonna have all the reasons why it is good to get an iPad Pro. And then on this side, we're gonna have all the reasons to get a laptop. And the underpinning rule that we're gonna utilize here is that it is better to get a device that can do multiple things, that can do many things, than a device that can only do one thing really well. So we're going for versatility and usability rather than kind of a specialist device. So let's start with the iPad. And I'm very familiar with the iPad. I've been using the iPad since 2016. So I understand what it's good at and the reasons to get it, but also its drawbacks. So we're gonna get into that. And the overarching reason why the iPad is so great, why I've loved the iPad, is because it allows a person to go paperless, right? So, I mean, I can't tell you how many years that I've been stacking up all these sheets of paper at home from GCSEs, high school to sixth form, college, part of university, and I literally never go back to check these notes again. The iPad has allowed me to mitigate all of this. And there's a number of ways that it's allowed me to do this. Number one, which is reason number one, it allows you to edit PDFs. Now it's very easy to just go on your university website. They'll have loads of PDFs like exercise sheets or PDFs to read. You can just download them, import to whatever note-taking app you use. I personally use Notability 
import it into there and then you can highlight you can annotate so for example when i was at uni we'd often have exercise sheets that we had to work through before our small group teaching sessions and they'd have lots of questions on them so literally what I could, what I could do is open it up on notability and answer the questions so like it's pen and paper but it's not pen and paper it's it's green and i can always refer back to those a kind of sheets again which is nice and the other useful thing is that you can store books in pdf format and annotate and highlight them and what was particularly useful for me was books with multiple choice questions as you know when you're a medical student one of the main formats of examination is multiple choice questions so i'd have those multiple choice books and go through the questions circle whichever was the answer and then move on and have the mark scheme like on the other side and then mark and etc just work through that which was really nice to have and the second reason to get an iPad is scanning documents. Now we've said that you can download PDFs from whatever website you want. But the other thing is that often you'd have sheets handed to you, but now when you get handed a sheet, how likely, let's be honest, how likely are you gonna be to keep that sheet like forever? Close to 0%, <laughs> yeah? So as soon as you get that sheet, bring out the iPad, scan the document, it's saved there, you can edit it as much as you want, and that is reason two. Reason number three is the note taking ability. Um, so you have the pen, you have the screen itself and you can note take wherever you want. You can note take in lectures. Personally, I don't go to lectures if I don't have to go, but when I do have to go, then the iPad has been very useful in taking notes in those lectures. But also for me in small group teaching sessions, it's been useful to take notes. Just whip out the iPad, you've got the pen, bang, bang, bang save the notes there forever. Now, reason number four is for productivity reasons. And I often use the iPad to plan my life, whether it be to write down my goals, whether it be to plan videos or to plan lectures that I give or uh, just loads of things that require writing, drawing things, thumbnails, like it all mostly happens on the iPad. And reason number five is that you can use it as an entertainment device. It's just nice to have, you can whip it out. It doesn't weigh that much. You can watch Netflix, you can watch YouTube, whatever floats your boat you can do on the iPad. Uh, even though, I mean, ideally you wanna use it for productivity reasons, but it is what it is. Let's be honest, we're all gonna watch Netflix on our iPads. So yeah, it's good for that too. Now we've mentioned the reasons to get an iPad Pro. Now let's mention some of the reasons to get a laptop or a MacBook. What are the positives of getting that? And the first reason is literally just the laptop experience, the interface. You know, you're using a mouse with a cursor, keyboard, trackpad. It's just very, very easy to navigate. And also all your files, your documents, and all the things that you've downloaded are all saved in folders that are also easy to find and navigate. You've also got the search functionality, which makes it much easier to find a specific file that you're looking for without having to click here and click here and click there. Overall, it's just an experience that we're used to. It's one that we've grown up with, and to be honest, is fairly efficient. However, now with a new iPad OS, with a new keyboard and trackpad for the iPad Pro, as well as the mouse functionality now that is available on the iPad Pro has meant that actually the iPad can now provide a similar experience to that of a laptop. And I mentioned in my previous video that it kind of feels like you're using a laptop and it's actually pretty seamless. It's very smooth and fluid when you're moving the cursor and all the kind of navigation options that you had with swiping. I've, I've shown all of that in the other video, so go and check that. The laptop experience is available on both. So now remember the rule that we mentioned before in terms of the laptop experience, both of these devices can provide a similar experience and so they kind of cancel out and we move on to the next reason why a person uh, might want to get a laptop. And the second reason why you might want to get a laptop is it's a lot easier to browse the net. I mean, you've, you can open up Safari using the trackpad and the keyboard and you're browsing through and the cursor is a lot easier instead of having to sometimes tap and then type like this. Browsing on a laptop is just nicer. But then again, I mentioned in my previous video that browsing is now really nice on the iPad too, especially with the trackpad and the magic keyboard. So to me anyway, browsing on an iPad with the trackpad and the keyboard or browsing on a laptop, especially if that iPad is 12.9 inch, to me is the same. And now because both of these can do a similar job in terms of browsing, they cancel out and we can remove them from the list. 
Now, the third reason why you might want to get a MacBook is because the power that a laptop can hold. But now these days, the iPad Pro is extremely, extremely powerful too. Um, to the point that, you know, you can edit videos on LumaFusion, I think, and it does it seamlessly. I haven't used it myself, but having seen other reviews, it seems like it does it really, really well. And in fact, even when you're using the keyboard and the trackpad, I don't think that you'll ever get to the point where you feel like the iPad isn't powerful enough to do the work that you need it to do, unless you need to edit some like 8K footage or something, right? In terms of power, both are fairly powerful here. So points cancel out. Let's move on to the fourth reason. And the fourth reason why you might want to get a laptop or MacBook as a student is that it's easier to write essays on a laptop or a computer or a PC. Still really nice to write essays on the iPad Pro. In particular, now you've got the keyboard and the trackpad, we've already said this like a hundred times, and it feels like when you're typing on the keyboard, essentially nice to write essays. There are some aspects that the iPad Pro is missing, and that's for advanced students or students who want to write academic papers. As you know, for academic writing, you need to be able to reference the things that you're saying. Okay, so if I say that uh, the UK has a population of 65 million people, then I can't just leave it as that. I need to say where I got that information from. So I need to cite the study or the article or journal where that information came from. And the usual way that I used to do that is through a reference manager. Okay, some people use citeme.com or whatever, but a reference manager like Mendeley allows you to have all your articles and journals and publications saved on that software and then as you're writing your essay you can cite your specific article that's been saved in your library and then it makes the bibliography for you you don't need to do it yourself and uh, now the iPad Pro doesn't have that function yet but there is a workaround and I'm gonna tell you about that workaround in a moment. So we're gonna keep that essay point there. And now the final reason why you might want to get a MacBook or a laptop is the softwares or the apps that are available on laptops that are not available on an iPad. Namely, we've already said Mendeley, Reference Manager, but also film editing softwares like Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut, uh, so those are not available on the iPad um, and like coding softwares as well. So in terms of reference managing, I'm going to tell you the workaround next. As for Adobe Premiere Pro and Final Cut and After Effects as well, uh, those three uh, are not available on the iPad and there is no workaround for that. So if you're a filmmaking student or you're a YouTuber or you want to make movies and videos, then you should be investing on a laptop. And really the only reason why we buy things is either to kind of make our day easier and make it more productive. So uh, for studying, etc. So that's one reason or as an investment that's going to bring you a return. So if you're making films and you're making videos and you feel like it's going to bring you a return, then it's worth to get a laptop too, probably in addition to an iPad. And that point we're going to leave there and it doesn't transfer over to the iPad. Now, what's the workaround that I mentioned in terms of the reference managing? And the workaround is to use uh, a software called EndNote. So EndNote is essentially identical to Mendeley and it allows you to save all your journals and articles in that reference manager. Uh, and then if you're using it on a laptop, then you can cite whichever article you've saved on there and it makes the bibliography for you and it updates it as you update the citations in your document or in your article. Now you can get the same app on the iPad OS, and that would be the EndNote app for iPad. And that doesn't do the full thing, so it doesn't update your bibliography as you cite. However, you can add temporary citations. So say I'm writing my article, and in my library I have an article that I want to cite, I can go on the app and copy a temporary citation and add it onto there. So it would be like the UK has a population of 65 million people and I would add a temporary citation on there. So then if I open that document on a laptop that has EndNote and I click on update, then it makes the bibliography for me or it updates the bibliography based on whether I add more temporary citations or I delete the citations. So that would be the workaround and for us, 
let's be honest, most of us do have some computer access at home. It might be some dead old laptop or it might be your sibling's laptop or it might be like a PC that's been sitting there and you've never really used it for the last three years. It will still be able to use your reference manager if you really want to use it. So um, yeah, literally just for that point, you can do that. So now what's the conclusion of all of this? As you can see, the iPad has many, many more points that it does than the laptop. The laptop only has literally softwares that it's better at doing. And also we said essay writing, but that that's linked to softwares really. So if you want value for money as a student, you want versatility, you want to be able to take notes by hand, but also switch up to a laptop interface, but also have that a PDF element that we talked about, scanning documents. You want to feel like you're using a laptop with a mouse and a keyboard and all of those things that we mentioned, then actually it kind of makes sense, honestly, to get an iPad, whether it be the new one, whether it be uh, the 2018 iPad Pro or even the iPad Air with the smart keyboard. So I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, then like the video, comment your thoughts below. And if you disagree, then let me know you disagree. If you agree, then let me know you agree. And also follow me on the Instagram and holla back at your boy. We're back with the American accent again. I don't know why, but safe.